All right, welcome back to HUD's American Civil War II. Uh, this is Charles, and uh, we're going to do the second tutorial in the Advanced Concepts and Tips series. And basically, what we're going to do today is take a look at um, Army Command, uh, Army Corps, and and divisions and how they um, how they interact. Um, now, some of this I have gone over previously in one of the I think the second uh, the second series. Uh, so some of it I'm going to go through a little quicker, and other parts I'll, I'll slow down um, slow down here. Um, so again, we're just in the third and final uh, tutorial series uh, in the game. And um, basically, it kind of just introduces us to the idea of army organization, and of course that's going to have an impact um, on our forces um, as, we, as we play the game. And so what we want to look at today is basically the idea of an army command and um, a core which is associated with an army and then a division which doesn't have to be but ideally um, is part of a core okay so the first thing it wants us to do is just very simply click on the Washington Brigade um, and what we're going to to see is that if you look at next to the envelope here it has a number two and then in parentheses number zero and then a 10 percent penalty so remember, in the American Civil War, um, generally forces take what in the game is called command points, and then they need some sort of leadership uh, structure to to manage the force. Now, when, you, when that does not exist, um, they're going to be penalized. In this case, 10%. It's 5% per per missing command point, and that will really slow their down their speed um, as well as their power, their combat power, which we looked at um, last time. As a footnote, there is a 35% maximum, so you can't have a force that's worth zero. So it doesn't matter how many command points are missing, um, the most their penalty would be um, would be would be 10%. So we want to avoid that. So let's go up here and take a look at Patterson's command. Um, Patterson was a general at the very beginning of the war and was relieved uh, quite quickly um, after First Manassas or, or Bull Run, um, basically for letting, letting General Johnston uh, get away and reinforce Boyergaard and Manassas. Um, but that's neither here nor there for our situation. So if you look at Patterson, you can see that um, he's using three command points and he has an option of seven. Um, and then the seven is provided by the two generals. So there's no command penalty. Um, finally, we'll, we'll, well, not finally, but let's take a look at McDowell, and we can see that McDowell has um, an option for 13 command points. And the reason that is is because even though McDowell and Patterson are both um, both three-star generals, McDowell is actually the leader of an army, um, and therefore is able to have many more command points uh, than otherwise. The way you think about it is when someone's assigned an army, they're also assigned supporting staff and other you know, war department support that's going to give them the ability to manage more forces effectively, um, which, which, makes, which makes sense. Um, now, what we can do is take a look at some of our different uh, generals. And let me move this over to the right. Um, and so I'll, you might remember how we did this. We're gonna um, we're gonna hide all the fleets. Yep. Okay. And we want to. Oh, we've already done it. We've hide. We've hit. Um, here we go. We've hidden. Um, yeah, we've hidden forces uh, without a leader. So we can see that we do have. Um, this is McDowell here at the Army of the Potomac 222. Um, and we do have some other three star generals, for instance, Butler 201, Banks 201, Patterson uh, 100. So McDowell at 222, um, that's not very good, but it is better, um, just better than some of these other ones. Uh, finally, of course, you might see 333, um, and we can see that that's Winfield Scott, but we look at this number over here, 999. It means that he's locked indefinitely. Um, 
And the reason that is to more historical gameplay when Phil Scott it was not really an option for him to 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 lead an army in a, in the field due to his age and weight. Um, for General Lyon, on the other hand, will become active in one turn. Um, so let's go back and, and look at the field. Um, and what we want to do is uh, take a look at Patterson and see a couple of things. One is that um, we could, for example, form an army with them. And so we could do that by clicking on the tent and then clicking on the form the army button. And then once I do that, it goes from 7 to 13. Before we're being hasty, we wanted to think that that is actually the best use of, of the force. And one reason that may not be a good idea is that when we read the tooltip, we're going to see that's going to cost us. Um, it's going to cost us two, um, two in national morale and and some points. And it says that we should actually promote banks first. Um, so we may not actually we may not actually want to do that. Um, now, okay, so we just took a look, we just did that, um, okay, and so we did, nope, I kind of skipped ahead, but we did, we did that as well, so we pointed him, and then we saw that, we saw that it went to 13, um, and so we haven't actually run the turn, so it's, um, and to move him. It does say we could go ahead and appoint banks if we want, so let's go ahead and do that. And then here you can see that it doesn't it doesn't actually cost us uh, any national morale. Alright, so I think we're going to get into the meat of what we actually want to do this turn, now that we kind of understand a little bit of the, the basics, is we want to take um, Patterson and make his, give him a force where he's a core commander associated with the Army of the Potomac, led by General McDowell. So to do that, we're going to click on the tent, but this time I'm going to hit the Create Core button. And then it also goes from 7 to 15. Okay, now, and by the way, we can see that he's now associated with, um, with McDowell. So there are a whole bunch of benefits to being um, a Corps commander um, under well, you have to be under an army command. One is you have more command points. Second is you can march to the sound of guns um, um, if you are, are nearby. And the third is if your leading general um, is a good leader, it's possible that your stats will increase. Um, of course, if the leading general is a very bad general, then your stats can can decrease. So it can go. So it can go both ways. Um, let's see. Ah, one other thing we will quickly look at before creating divisions is um, if you click on the element, as I just did, um, you can see that Patterson has seniority 32, 32. So his current seniority is 32, and his second, his st starting seniority is also 32. And I think you have to have, you have to increase by four um, to be able to be promoted. So. As you're playing the game, you're going to want to promote um, generals, especially from one star to two star, so they can lead cores, and then in certain situations from two star to three star. Uh, there's a, a note here that um, sometimes when you promote generals, their stats can, can decrease um, because maybe they don't always perform well um, perform well at a higher at a higher command. Okay, so let's focus in on Patterson's command. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and merge these other forces called right flank and left flank with them, and we have one other general we can we have in in, um, in the force here. So we want to create a division. Patterson is the core commander. She's not going to lead a lead a division. In fact, there isn't even um, there you go. You can't, there's not even an option. But if we click click on Daniel Butterfield, um. Now I'm going to press Enable Division Command, and then while he's selected, I'm going to hit Control, and I'm going to highlight all the other forces. Okay, and then I'm going to hit the plus symbol that says Combined Units, or Control C. And now, if we look over to the right, we're going to see Butterfield's division. 
a um, whole bunch of infantry, one cavalry regiment, and then one light six pound battery. This is not a very strong division, and it should give you a moment to pause as you're if you fall along the game a little bit. One is that there's only one battery of artillery. Um, and secondly, is a lot of these are, are volunteers, and so they're, they may not have the discipline to, um, they may not have the discipline, um, for instance, to take on a, a better trained uh, force um, led by General Jackson or General uh, Johnson, for example. Um, anyway, so if we think about this in a hierarchy, we could say we have the Army of the Potomac <clears throat> based in Alexandria. General Patterson is leading the Patterson, it's labeled Patterson Command, um, and this is a core of the Army of the Potomac. General Butterfield leads a division in the core led by Patterson, which is part of the Army of the Potomac. Um, that's basically how you're going to want to uh, basic level of how you're probably going to want to structure most of your large armies. Army, corps, and then with divisions, um, with divisions uh, in, in the corps. Um, there, isn't any, are, there aren't any divisions in, right, in here right now, but uh, we could, for example, go ahead and go through all of this and um, we could, let's just do it now, we can, we can um, make a few more divisions, for example, and then I can drop it merge into the Army of Potomac, and then we could do that and so forth. And then you could think, um, rather than having a penalty for each one, you could put them um, in here, and then you could use the command points that um, McDowell's army structure gives to increase um, the effectiveness of this group um, without command penalties, up to 17. Um, so one key, key, key point here is that a division only is going to cost you four command points. It doesn't matter if it's one regiment or if it's, you know, 15 regiments and, and two batteries. It's always going to cost you four. So if you think about it, um, right now this um, has a command cost of four plus one battery here is, is five. So we could actually go ahead and um, you could put in nine, 13. You could put in three more divisions. So if we made all these three divisions, we could put it, put them into the Army of the Potomac, and then they would still not have any, um, any command penalties. What's more, if Patterson were nearby, they would be able to support um, this army unit by, um, by marching, by marching to the sound of guns. Um, I think those are pretty much the highlights uh, for today. Oh, one other thing here is it does talk about you get basically, um, if you're really into the numbers, you get division and stack bonuses. Uh, it's three percent um, for for the leader and then five percent for the overall commander. So um, basically, a div units can be much more effective in a division, which is also even furthermore in a core than if they were just um, out alone. And I guess the final thing to say, which I think is going to make sense, when you're when you have um, divisions, it's it's rare that a, you know a couple of regiments get completely get completely destroyed. It does happen, um, but it's they're going to have a better option to support. Um, so the commander can support each other by replacing them or, or taking them out before the entire regiment surrenders. Of course, it still does happen, and if you're facing a large enough force, you might have the entire division basically surrender. So that is that is another option as well. All right, um, this has been Charles, and I uh, hope you have a good understanding, or at least a, a decent understanding of how the Army Corps division and then sub-element um, sub structure works under under the, under the divisions. Um, and just remember, all division is is a combination of a bunch of elements, which means you're going to have your infantry regiments, your cavalry regiments, and your artillery batteries. Okay, see you next time.